Welcome to Good Libations, our show about mixology. I'm Ethel Andrews, I'm a mixologist. And as you know, in recent times I've been demonstrating muddling techniques. And it's critically important to know this, because as I spoke of before, if you're muddling something that has some substance to it, you're going to have to use a heavy hand. But on the other hand, if you're muddling something that's more delicate, you don't want to pulverize it, because then you're going to liquefy it, and you might as well run it through a food processor or a blender. Um, muddling is going to change the texture of something to a certain degree, but it shouldn't radically change it, especially if it's something that's delicate. And today we're going to make a martini variant that actually involves the muddling of raspberries. And again, we want to be careful when we muddle raspberries because if you overdo it, you're pulverizing it and liquefying it, and we don't want to do that. And again, as I've done on previous shows, I'm going to use the shaker, of course, because it is a martini. But by the same token, I'm also going to use the shaker to muddle in so that we don't damage glassware. And of course, it's not practical anyway to muddle in a martini glass. So again, what we're going to do is add the raspberries to the shaker at this point. And we're going to add the alcohol that we're going to use, which in this particular drink, it's going to be a vodka martini, not a gin-based one. Add a sufficient amount and get ready to muddle it up very, very nicely. And in this particular drink, too, we're going to add um, some triple sec liqueur, which is an orange-based liqueur. And as I always mention, this is a little more economic because Cointreau is better, but Cointreau is also very expensive. You have to have deep pockets to buy Cointreau. You can also use orange curacao because you're going to get a little bit different, slightly sweeter yet orange flavor. But again, it adds that orange infusion to the drink. So here we go. I'm going to add a bit of that to this martini variant. And I think we're going to add just a hint more vodka. We could always experiment as we go along. And for some people, adding a bit of sugar is not a bad idea. And I mean just a bit of sugar, not a huge amount of it. And again, if you're going to do simple syrup, make it yourself. Don't buy commercial simple syrup. And anyway, in the base, of the liquor, we're going to do some muddling, but with more of a delicate hand, because we don't want, again, to pulverize the raspberries. Yeah, to muddle is mainly done to extract the flavor of the particular fruit that we're muddling. And when we muddled kumquats in a previous drink, we had to use a heavy hand, but not with the raspberry. And again, as I always do, I'm using a wooden spoon, not a real, quote, muddler. Because you don't need to run out and buy a muddler. You can if you wish, if you want to appear more, quote, professional, but it's not necessary. Improvisation and necessity is the mother of invention. So here we have it. And at this particular point, we're going to add the ice because we're going to shake it like a traditional martini. And we know the issue always arises when we're making regular martinis about shaken versus stirred. Because some people say that you're disturbing the molecules if you shake the drink, that it's better to stir it. And I disagree. I think a shaken martini is more refreshing and is actually a more palatable drink. And of course, if you're making martini variants, you are going to use a shaker. You're not going to stir them. So we're going to go ahead and do that and make sure the top doesn't come flying off. I'm going to shake it up really nice. And then we're going to divest it in the martini glass. And then we're going to do a couple of other things to the drink. And you notice the lovely hue of the raspberries in the drink. It's added color to the drink, and I can smell the aroma of the raspberries. And because we're using a shaker, or if we used a glass on top to shake it with, we would divest it through a screen. We're not getting 
any pureed raspberry in the drink. And then what we want to do is we want to add a bit of lime to the drink because it adds the essence of the lime, the oil of the lime, and it adds some complexity to the drink as well. And raspberries, along with lemon and lime, blend very, very well. And if you wish to, you can actually use a raspberry vodka in this drink. Many people like to do that. And that's perfectly acceptable. In fact, that could be good. But to me, the more fresh ingredients that you have and the less chemicals and color, food coloring and artificial flavors, the better off you are. But that is perfectly fine because you can get raspberry infused, you know, vodkas as well. And then again, we want to garnish in the drink. And we're going to accomplish that by adding a little bit of lime to it. And if you want to, you can add just a twist. You don't have to add a half of a wheel of lime. You can do a twist as well. But I'm going to go ahead and add the wheel of lime. And because we used triple sec in the drink, I'm also going to add a little bit of orange peel to the drink and a little bit of orange. Because again, triple sec is an orange-based liqueur. So we're going to go about doing that. And appearance-wise, you have the orange floating in the drink. And again, you have the lime floating in the drink, too. So it makes for a pretty um, va martini variant. And again, these little things mean a lot. Garnishes mean a lot. Technique means a lot. So it's good to pay attention to these things. But don't let them confine you, either. You can become innovative and do things in your own way without compromising the drink. Again, as long as we're not using ingredients that don't successfully marry with one another. As an example, lime and whiskeys do not go well together. Lemon goes better with whiskey. With rum, with vodka, you could use either lime or lemon. With gin, it's better to use lemon. So knowing those things is important. But again, you can go beyond the box, as they say, and add your own touches to it. And again, to review, we muddled the drink in the shaker. We didn't pulverize the raspberries. We delicately muddled them. And we added the other ingredients. We muddled them in the vodka and made sure, again, that we did it carefully. And then we shook it with ice. And then we divested it into the martini glass. We added the squeeze of fresh lime. We added the lime garnish. We added the triple sec when it was still in the shaker. And again, made sure that the vodka and the triple sec blended. And then we added a bit of orange, mostly for decorative purposes, but also to give it that subtle hint of fresh orange because it you know, marries beautifully with the triple sec. And on this basis, we have ourselves a lovely appearing and very nicely flavored martini variant. And I'm going to take a little sip of this. That is quite lovely. Nicely done. The subtlety is there, but the strength of the martini is there also. So we have a very nice martini variant. And again, you could buy raspberry-infused vodka if you wish, but better to do it just using the raspberry and using regular vodka. And again, I want to emphasize that it's good to enjoy our cocktails. It's fun. But as with somebody who prepares a gourmet meal, if somebody just inhaled the food, that's really not especially complimentary to the host. If you enjoy the food in a moderate way, it shows more of a compliment to the host. And the same thing if we're enjoying cocktails. Drink sensibly, drink in moderation, show respect for our community and for the safety of others. Don't drink and drive. Be responsible and be sensible. And thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations, which is our show about mixology. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. And again, we're going to have future episodes dealing with a whole panorama of different cocktails. Thank you again for tuning in. Goodbye.